Hello, everyone. Kelly Link joined by Rachel Cuerco. And we have Shelly with us here for Sea of Thieves Woo! E3 on Twitch, everyone. Really excited. Rachel and I both play this game probably every week, I would say. We get together, hit up Yar. <laughs> we're very good pirates. We have a channel just for it on our Discord. That's awesome. <laughs> So we're going to be talking about the two expansions that are coming out, uh, as well as the weekly content. So let's talk a little bit about the first expansion that we saw, which I believe was the, the ghost ship. Um, so, yeah, so, well, the actually, the first expansion for Sea of Thieves since launch, so we launched um, a couple of months ago now. Right. Which was crazy, crazy awesome for us. Like, in every way exceeded our expectations. We saw four million players come and play in the first couple of months. And um, something that was really cool as well, like, we always built Sea of Thieves to be something that would be watchable and shareable. And we saw, like, 5% of people, actually one in 20 people, streamed Sea of Thieves as well, which was just amazing for us to see. Um, and then, like, we released our first update um, a few weeks ago now, which was the Hunger in Deep. I don't know if you guys... Yes, absolutely. Yeah, the big shark. Yeah. Deep. <laughs> We've seen the big shark. <laughs> um, and so, now, as we look forward, um, as we were showing in the E3 trailer, we have the Cursed Sails mm -hmm. coming out in July, and then we have Forsaken Shores. So, Cursed Sails, there are these skeleton ships coming to the Sea of Thieves. So, like, actually, it's something that like a while ago, we were, we were quite adamant we were not going to do. So this is part of our testament to always listening to player feedback and like always just growing the, growing the game with players. Like it's not just something that we're saying, it's something we're really committed to doing. And we looked at feedback after launch and we just thought, adding these skeleton ships into the world, like people love the ship combat. Yes, But they, do. they don't, yeah, <laughs> they don't always want to have to like do that with other players. And something that was really cool in Hunger and Deep was like, did you crew up with yeah. another, <laughs> with another crew? So like Hunger and Deep, we actually saw our ship encounters, like whether or not they ended in combat, that halved during the Hunger and Deep. So, like, the Sea of Thieves became twice as friendly, like, during that. Well, you know what was really cool is even before you guys released this content, the players are kind of making the game their own. There was a time where we were on a sloop and partied up with, a, like, two other sloops to take down the Skull Keep over yes. another galleon. Yeah. Mm. It's really cool how players are kind of molding the game along with you all. Absolutely. Like, it's, it's always been our intention is something that we just want to keep growing. Like, obviously, you have the skeleton forts in there that encourage, like, if you want to, you can go in and cooperate together. Hunger and Deep, that was something that we tried. And... It was a little bit risky because the only way you could summon the Megalodon was to have five players and the maximum crew size is four, so you needed to find another crew. So we tried that and it just went down like so well. People just loved it and like I loved it. Like we all went in and played the Hunger and Deep. Like we all play it online, like when, when the releases come out, play it with strangers, see what's going on. And turning up to Shark Bait Cove and seeing all those like ships just waiting yes. there and people getting the speaking trumpet out saying, yes. Hey, do you want to come and fight the Megalodon with that us? That was such a cool piece it was of just, content. It was just super cool. It's just like, yeah, the speaking, uh, what was it called speaking again? Speaking trumpet. If you guys don't know, it allows you to actually speak to other players farther away yeah. and kind of collect them together. Yeah. Are there going to be new items like that in the Absol game that we're going to see? Yeah, take? absolutely. So with um, Hungry and Deep, you had like the Megalodon, which was like the AI threat. And then you had these tools, which were the flag system. You had the speaking trumpet and you had the drum. So each release that we do will be, there'll be multiple things in there. So um as we move forward, like we're always going to be enriching every area of the game. And one of those tools, like as we look forward to Forsaken Shores, is the rowboat. So, yes, yeah. tell me about the rowboat because I was okay. so excited to see it. <laughs> so, probably if I explain a little bit about Forsaken Shores, like first and kind of why it fits into yeah. that world. So, in the okay, in okay. Forsaken Shores, we have so you have the three areas of Sea of Thieves that you sail and that you know at the moment, but they're all um, they all feel different. They've got a different vibe, but they're all the same difficulty. Mm -hmm. So, what we wanted to do was introduce an area that was a lot more difficult. That was kind of like you could opt in as a crew. You will never start there, but you can say. I think we'll head into the, and it's called the Devil's Roar, like it's the new area. And you'll be able to sail in and like the islands are the threat. So you've got like AI threats in the world, like the Megalodon, and you've got the skeleton ships that are coming in with cursed sails. But then in Forsaken Shores, it's the island itself that's turning against you. So you might step foot ashore with your treasure map and you're like, everything's fine. Like we're going to go over there, we'll find the X. And then you'll feel like a tremor and you'll be like... What so it's worse do? than snakes what and it's do? worse than stones <laughs> at their own manned cannons. And then you look up at like the volcano and you might see like black smoke starts pluming out and you're like, I don't know if we've got time. And you're never quite going to know when this stuff's going to happen, how much time you're going to oh, have. So it's random, just and like a skull fort. It's emergent. It's, and like it, the island is alive and we want it to feel unpredictable and alive. There are little signs like you'll feel some tremors, but you'll, the tremors might come and go and like everything might be fine. But then... The, if the volcano explodes, hot lava spews out, you have the debris like 
really hot, massive rocks falling down. They can destroy your ship. They can like hurt the player. So obviously the rowboat, like coming in with Forsaken Shores, you're a smaller target. So you might anchor down further Poor away <laughs> and then like row in. But with all of these things that we're adding, they they come in with these content updates, but then they are just in the world. So after yeah. the Hungering Deep, the Megalodon will just, it, they he will appear, she or she will appear randomly. Megan. Or Megan, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, or you might also like be kind of sailing along and just see the fin emerge, which is like super scary as well. And like, do we leave her alone? Like, or do we attack first? Like, what's the best thing to do? And when the skeleton ships come in as well, like we'll introduce that with a campaign. We'll do something special around that, like we did for Hunger and Deep. But then once, once that time has passed, the skeleton ships will just be another feature that's in the world. And the rowboat's the same as that. So we hope to see things like, I really want to see like how many people get in a rowboat with a bunch of treasure when, they, when the ship's gone down and <laughs> oh, they're just kind of, of like... with a bunch of TNT yeah, and oh, ramming exactly, into another that's, one. That's exactly, oh, that'd yeah. be great. Write that one down, Kelly. <laughs> I am, I'm mentally. Uh, one of the questions I want to address too, and one of the coolest things I've found about Sea of Thieves is that um, the way the, the loot interacts, like you, you spend all this time and you hoard all this treasure, and then someone comes and sinks your boat and you lose it all, and that's fine because you're not upgrading your guns, you're not losing progress in the game, everything is cosmetic. And then yeah. when you reintroduce, uh, you introduce new items like the drum or the, the far horn, uh, you, it's free. You just have to, to unlock it in the game. So I think it's so incredible how you are expanding this universe with your, your game base in mind. Yeah, exactly. I mean, for us, we, we've, we never wanted to do kind of power progression in Sea of Thieves because a big part of our mantra is bringing players together. And that's something that, uh, that's blown us away. We've seen people saying, I I've been playing this with my husband or my wife who doesn't normally play games or my kids. And it's bought players who don't normally play together. They're able to play together. And like our mantra around anyone can come in at any point mm -hmm. and just have have an adventure. You don't, you don't feel like you're too late to join Sea of Thieves because everyone's like Absolutely. higher level than you. So, but the cosmetics are just a really beautiful way of like you can show that you were there and you did that thing. So you beat the megalodon, you have the the shark figurehead. Right. Like only people who were there for Hunger and Deep and beat the megalodon will have that to is, show. So. Is that going to be the same thing that we're going to see with the skeleton ships? Yeah, we will we will have time. So for each each um, kind of event, um, sorry, each content update, we will run like a campaign that will be have time limited rewards but we're looking at um even updating that from feedback from Hunger and Deep. So people wanted ways to, or well, reasons to replay it. They wanted, uh -huh. like, I want to go and help somebody else. Like, give me reasons to, like, do it, like, again and mm -hmm. again and again. So that's something that we're looking to put into Carcel. So, yeah, so although we have these, we have these planned out, like, some of the nuances of that will grow with our, with our audience as we have been all the way through it. Now, Rachel, you did say that you don't lose anything, it's only aesthetic progression, but I kind of want to be a pirate legend. How is that still working in these expansions that we're seeing? Is it still getting all three level 50s? You're going to be a pirate legend. Is there anything new for the pirate legend? So um, we are looking at ways to enrich the game for everybody, including pirate legends, um, but in the in the short term as well, like we are introducing Bilge Rat Adventures, and the first one will go live this week. So the Bilge Rats, they're this kind of ragtag, renegade, like, crew. They're a new company, They but they live, like, in the, well, they hang out in the tavern. They've been hanging and in the pub, right? Yeah, they got exactly, the ratty yeah. clothes on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and they, they just love the spirit of adventure. So they're going to have these time-limited kind of um, events that they'll run, these adventures. And the first one we're um, releasing this week, and that's a Skeleton Thrones event, that's probably going to run for about two weeks. Again, like, we, we want to find the right amount of time that it's um, it feels like you've had Enough, but people have had enough time, but that the time limited kind of cosmetics are meaningful to the people who were there. Mm -hmm. um, so those events, like the first one's Skeleton Thrones. So we've hidden ten, like, well, the Bilge Rats have hidden ten Skeleton Thrones. We're not telling anyone where they are. They're in really hard to find places. And you need to, like, use your creativity to reach them, like firing yourselves out of cannons. Uh, and half of them require you to sit in them with another crew as well. Oh, that's So great. you'll need to recruit people. Because, again, like, it just worked so well with Hunger and Deep. We wanted to, like, to build on that and mm -hmm. then use that sense of community. And... For doing these activities, you'll earn a new currency, which is called Bilge Rat Doubloons. And the Bilge Rats will offer you time-limited cosmetics. So there's, a, there's some bone crusher cosmetics, really cool skeleton-themed cosmetics for the skeleton thrones. Limited, so for the amount of time that skeleton thrones runs, like the, there will be some cosmetics that the Bilge Rats will offer. And then when they move on to offer you the next adventure, there'll be some more new cosmetics in there. Okay. So if you've got those cosmetics or you've earned those titles, people know you were there and you did that event. Yes, absolutely. But to answer your question about Pirate Legend, um, the 
the Build Your Act doubloons, you don't have to use them for the cosmetics. You can also buy letters of recommendation for each of the companies. So these are basically, they'll whisper in their ears for you and get you some reputation with either the gold holders, the order oh, souls, or the Merchant Alliance. I'm not a big fan of the Merchant Alliance. That's the one that I'm the lowest level <laughs> right. on. So you can buy a letter of recommendation and they'll essentially bribe them for you and just oh. yeah, get you some re reputation, which is our last form of XP. Or you can use the Build Your Act doubloons to buy gold as well. So if you've got something that you're saving for, like a really nice hull or something, you can do the Build Your Act adventures and earn, so you can either earn your cosmetics, you can buy a letter of recommendation, or you can earn some gold. So it's entirely up to play. Shelley, this all sounds so amazing. You've told us a lot about the expansions that we're going to see and the new content uh, with the events that we're going to be seeing. And I want to remind everyone what's going to be coming. So let's check out the trailer for Sea of Thieves. You needn't cower in the doorway. I actually like meeting new people. Uh, besides, the conversation with my friend here has reached a bit of an impasse. I think you just need a moment to cool off. Now, I sense that you brought me something to inspect. Show me. Oh. Uh, ah. uh. Oh. The waves of change roll throughout the seas, and a new land is revealed. The forsaken shores. A place of darkness, where fire and ash consume all. And from the depths, skeleton crews will rise to curse the seas. An ancient evil set loose upon the Sea of Thieves. You have delivered unto me a portent of two most terrible. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> you just wanted to know how much it was worth, didn't you? Fine, I'll give you ten for it. <laughs> <laughs>